Welcome to the Distinguished Young Women of New York's virtual program. I'm Wenting Yu, and I am the Distinguished Young Woman of New York for 2021. I'm so excited to be here as we celebrate some incredible student leaders from across New York. The young women you will meet today exemplify scholarship, leadership, and talent. We appreciate you joining us as we honor and celebrate them. Now, let's meet our New York class of 2022. Hi everyone, my name is Cindy Haas and I go to Victor Senior High School. One fun fact about me is that when I lived in Canada for three years, I went to preschool and kindergarten there. And when I went to preschool, it was actually a French speaking preschool and that's where my love for French started. Hi, I'm Sierra Harris. I'm a distinguished young woman of Crown Point. I'm a senior at Crown Point Central School and a fun fact about me is that I'm always cold. Hi, my name is Zoe Alcott and I'm the distinguished young woman of Mariah. I currently attend Mariah Central School as a senior, and one fun fact about me is that I like to downhill ski in my free time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Cotter, and I attend Allendale Columbia School in Rochester, New York. On the track team, I run the steeplechase, which involves hurdling barriers and jumping through water pits. And one young woman from the state class will be selected to represent New York at the 65th Annual National Finals of Distinguished Young Women in Mobile, Alabama in June. At the national level, more than $100,000 in cash tuition scholarships will be awarded. And over $1 billion, that's with a B, in college granted scholarships are available to the class of 2022 at all levels, including to all the participants on stage this afternoon. The evaluation process is the same at all levels of participation from local to state to nationals. The participants are judged in five categories of achievement, two of which, scholastics and interview, are non-stage categories. It is this program's goal to honor young women who excel in these areas and to encourage continuing roles of leadership in their community and professional life, thereby providing positive role models for today's society. Scoring has already been tabulated in the scholastics area, which counts 25% of each participant's overall score. Each participant's academic record, GPA, and college entrance test scores were evaluated by a separate scholastics judge who has a background in evaluating high school transcripts. The other category of offstage judging is interview, which is worth 25%. Each participant had a 10-minute private interview with our judges. The judges base their scores on effective communication, mental alertness and composure, awareness of current events, and personality. With interview and scholastics already tabulated, that means that half of the judging has already been completed. The onstage portion of judging that you are going to see today counts for the remaining 50% of each participant's score. We are now ready for our first category of performance, which is fitness. For the young women of today, the need for strength and stamina is greater than ever before. In fact, research has shown that fitness predicts greater educational and professional achievements later in life. During fitness, judges look for physical well-being, coordination, stamina, and agility. Fitness counts for 15% of each participant's overall score. Four, three, two, one. Level up, 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 level up. All this on me so yummy, all this sounds so yummy. No, you want me to see yummy, yummy all in your time. Level up, level up, level up, level up, level up.
performance. We want to thank our state choreographer Kayla Williams for all her hard work. She not only created the at-large fitness sequence, but also the state program routine and teaching videos. Additionally, Kayla hosted Zoom rehearsals to help our participants get ready. Thank you for your time and talents, Kayla. Founded in 1958 in Mobile, Alabama, Distinguished Young Women, formerly America's Junior Miss, is the largest and oldest national scholarship program for high school girls. It has provided life-changing experiences for more than 775,000 young women across the country and over $114 million in cash scholarships at the local, state, and national levels. In addition to cash scholarships, Distinguished Young Women participants are eligible for college-granted scholarships from almost 100 colleges and universities. Over $1 billion in college-granted scholarships were provided last year, some of which included full tuition, room, and board to first-class institutions, and over $2.1 million in cash scholarships were awarded nationwide. Many participants leave the program with scholarships to help with their college educations but all of them walk away with new life skills to help them succeed in college and the workforce. Plus, they gain new friendships and increased self-confidence. Distinguished Young Women strives to give every young woman the opportunity to further her education and prepare for a successful future. You can learn more about the program at its website, www.distinguishedyw.org. The task of selecting our new Distinguished Young Woman will not be an easy one. Our judges are all experienced volunteers who have graciously given up their personal time to evaluate our class digitally. Let's meet the people who have that responsibility and please check out our digital program book online to read their full bios.
Emily Lloyd Herman was Bartow County's Junior Miss in 2006 and second runner-up at Georgia's Junior Miss. She graduated from Oklahoma City University with a Bachelor of Arts in Theater Performance and was a scholarship rower on the women's varsity crew team, earning several NCAA medals. She has performed in various venues across the eastern United States as a contracted vocalist. Emily has been a volunteer with the Distinguished Young Women program for several years as the Florida Production Chair, Central Florida At-Large Chair, and Dallas At-Large Judges Chair, in addition to judging and mentoring. Emily spent 12 years as a Walt Disney World cast member, where she was a production stage manager, before she and her husband moved to Texas to pursue a new chapter in early 2020. She obtained her master's degree in corporate communication in 2014 from Austin P. State University and was named to Oklahoma City University's 30 Under 30 for 2017. Most notably, Emily was chosen as a semifinalist for the Walt Disney World Ambassador Program for 2017 and 2018 and was selected as a Walt Disney Legacy Award recipient in 2019. She is currently a professor of speech and communication at Collin College in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Michael Jones has served as a judge for Distinguished Young Women local programs for many years, as well as having judged many state programs throughout the Southeast. He and his wife have served as a host family for Alabama's Distinguished Young Women program for over 10 years, and he is now serving as the state chair. Mr. Jones is a graduate of Troy University, receiving a degree in Computer Information Science and Business Administration. While attending Troy, Michael appeared in several musicals, including New Moon, Carmen, 1776, and Annie. He is a member of Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia Professional Men's Music Fraternity. Michael is the past president of the Alabama Public Health Association and was inducted in its Class of 2011 Hall of Fame. He is also an active board member of both the STEP Foundation and ALCAP. An active member of Taylor Road Baptist Church, he has taught first and second grade children's choir, played handbells, and sings in the adult choir. Michael currently serves as the Minister of Music for First Baptist Church of Union Springs and is employed with the Alabama Department of Finance as the State of Alabama's Chief Procurement Officer. He resides in Montgomery with his wife, Lisa. Maite Marin Mara was the 2016 Distinguished Young Woman of Minnesota. She graduated with a degree in biomedical engineering from the Georgia Institute of Technology. While at Georgia Tech, she was part of the Yellow Jacket Marching Band, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, Hispanic Recruitment Team, and the Society of Women Engineers. Maite has published and patented her work developing a 3D printed surgical simulation tool for brain mapping training and preoperative planning. Currently, Maite is working in strategy and management consulting based out of Minneapolis. Maite has spent some of her time supporting DYW programs in both Georgia and Minnesota. Brooke Rucker is a Brooklyn-based artist and arts administrator specializing in dance. She began her arts training in her hometown, Cartersville, Georgia, and went on to earn her BFA in dance at Florida State University in 2018. She has performed with Charles Anderson's Dance Theater X and Gaspard and Dancers as a company member, and she is also apprenticed with Urban Bush Women. Currently, Brooke is a member of the Red Project NYC's Movement Ensemble. In addition to her dancing, Brooke works at Urban Bush Women as their Development and Visioning Partner Assistant and at the Red Project NYC as their Company Assistant. Brooke is a member of Dance NYC's Junior Committee, a proactive working committee for emerging leaders in the field. She is also a curatorial fellow with Smush Gallery based in Jersey City, Jersey. You can connect with Brooke through her Instagram, at Brooke Rucker. In 2014, Brooke was selected as the Distinguished Young Woman of Bartow County, Georgia, and America, earning $65,300 in cash scholarships at the local, state, and national levels. We are so excited to have Brooke joining us today as a program judge. Gabriella Walker is a former professional ballet dancer and entrepreneur. She is a York County, Pennsylvania, Distinguished Young Women alumna and first runner-up. She graduated from Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, where she earned a degree in ballet performance and fashion media. In her dance career, Gabriella has performed works by George Balanchine, Anthony Tudor, Marius Pettipa, Adam Hoagland, Gina Patterson, and Martha Graham, among others. She has also performed with companies such as the Atlanta Ballet, the Ballet Theater of Maryland, and Ballet X. After moving to New York City in 2019, Gabriella pursued a career in e-commerce merchandising. 
She currently works for an e-commerce startup and manages several direct-to-consumer brands for celebrities, professional athletes, and media companies. Our scholastics judge, Barb Berja, is the undergraduate's records coordinator in the College of Health Sciences at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After working for many years in emergency medicine and emergency medicine research, she is proud to have returned to her alma mater, where she earned her Bachelor of Arts in Communication and Rhetorical Studies, with emphasis in cross-cultural and intercultural communications. At Marquette, Barb is honored to serve as the advisor to both the medical and a public health chapter of Global Brigades for the past 10 years, working with student groups serving in Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. For the past nine years, she has served on the board of directors for the Stars and Stripes Honor Flight Organization, which honors veterans with a life-changing trip to Washington, D.C., to visit their memorial and experience an, a day of honor and thanks. Barb started her involvement with the Junior Miss program as a local participant in the class of 1987 and got back involved following her niece's participation in the same local program for the class of 2009. She volunteered for the Wisconsin State Program for 10 years and is honored to continue volunteering with the Distinguished Young Women Scholarship Program literally from coast to coast mentoring participants, volunteering as a scholastics and program judge for various at-large, local, and state programs, and serving as a state participant coordinator and state judges coordinator. We would also like to thank our three at-large program judges, Haley Geiger from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who was a Distinguished Young Woman of West Virginia for 2017, Mallory Nielsen Hardy from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who was a Distinguished Young Woman of Delaware for 2016, and Nicolette Montica from Indianapolis, Indiana, who was the Distinguished Young Woman of Lee County, Georgia for 2015. It is now time for our next category, Talent. As you may know, many of our program participants go on to successful careers in the performing arts. But this isn't our only goal in recognizing and rewarding talent. Participation in the performing arts is actually linked to positive outcomes in school, emotional development, and family life. Each participant will perform for 90 seconds and they are scored on originality, technical ability, appropriateness of selection and costume, as well as stage presence. This category counts for 20% of their total score. Participant number one, Sydney Haas, has enjoyed speaking French since she was young. She admires the French language and French culture, the welcoming atmosphere, kind friends, and caring people she experienced and met while she lived in Canada continue to impact her to this day. She learned of her passion for teaching French when she was able to do an internship in a French class. For her talent video, she will be demonstrating some French techniques she uses when teaching. Here's participant number one, Sydney Haas. Hi, my name is Sydney Haas. Learning new things has always been very important to me, and one thing I love to learn is French. Since I lived in Canada and went to school there for two years, I have loved the French-Canadian culture and the French language. I chose teaching French as my talent because of the positive impact it's had on my life. Recently, I had the opportunity to teach a family friend, Mrs. Kitty, more about the French language and about the French culture. Today, I'll be demonstrating some of the techniques and lesson plans that I used when teaching her French. One of the first things we did is review vocab that pertained to her trip, such as eating in restaurants, shopping in stores, and exploring new places. We learned these new words by practicing them together and through Quizlet flashcards. Next, we focused on the grammar she would learn for her trip. We practiced verbs such as aller and avoir using verb boxes such as these. We used similar techniques when learning about past tense and future tense verbs as well. Finally, we practiced conversations. We came with example conversations such as these and practiced the vocab and grammar she had been learning about. Thank you. The song Body Love by Mary Lambert shows the true beauty of loving your body. Participant number two, Sierra Harris, will express through dance her belief that women all around the world should know that they are worthy, regardless of their looks. Sierra has been dancing since the age of seven and is very passionate about it. She would like to thank her family for the constant love and support, as well as Miss Jen for choreographing her dance and the many years of training to get to this point. Here's participant number two, Sierra Harris. I know girls who are trying to fit into the social norm like squeeze in the last year's prom dress. I know girls who are low rise, Mac eyeshadow, and binge drinking. I know girls that wonder if they're disaster and sexy enough to fit in. I know girls who are fleeing bombs from the mosques of their skin. 
plain rush through the limb with death. It's never easy to accept that our bodies are fallible and flawed. When do we draw the line? When the knife hits the skin, isn't it the same thing as purging because we're so obsessed with death? Some women just have more guts than others. The funny thing is women like us don't shoot. Every day, medical professionals perform endotracheal intubations as a life-saving procedure to breathe for a patient. This year, participant number three, Zoe Olcott, feels fortunate enough to be in a CB Tech medical classroom where she learns everyday medical procedures. One day, she hopes to be able to perform this on an actual patient and save a life. For today, participant number three, Zoe Olcott, will be performing an endotracheal intubation on a practice mannequin. The first step is repositioning the patient's airway to get a clear shot of the vocal cords. Next, I will insert my laryngoscope, lifting up on the tongue to view the vocal cords. Once I see them, I will take my tube and insert, aiming for directly between the two vocal cords. Once my tube is in between them, I will insert two to three more inches. Next, I will inflate my balloon, which will hold my tube in place. Next, I will remove my rigid stylet, which keeps my tube bent. <laughs> I am now attaching my bad dog mask and pumping air. My tube is in a trachea, which is symbolized by my lungs inflating. I have successfully completed an endotracheal intubation. Thank you. One of Mary's favorite sayings is, the best things in life are not things. Instead, it is the people around us, the love between us, and the experiences we share, which create the memories we will treasure forever. The most powerful moments are quite rare, and it is in these unique situations and life-altering realities by which we recognize our deepest love. Here to share a personally powerful moment through her original spoken word narrative, Shaving My Head, it's participant number four, Mary Cotter. Back in summer 2020, emotionally exhausted from COVID lockdown, I started negotiating with my mom for permission to shave my head. Though typically understanding of teen trends, for some reason she was resistant to this haircut. Being a veterinarian, she saw shaving as clinical and not stylish. But by December 2020, I finally had permission to shave. There I was in the bathroom, electric clipper vibrating in my hand, the buzzing beast ready to take action. But there would be no shocking style. No giggling best friend by my side to record the process. In fact, tears were running down my face and my hands were sweaty and trembling. The clippers were squarely pointed at my mom's head. After being diagnosed with a very aggressive form of breast cancer, she didn't want to see her long hair fall out during her arduous chemotherapy journey. I started shaving the sides. Seeing her hair fall to the floor unleashed another wave of tears. But she reassured me that I would be okay. Yeah, I'm going to be okay. But what about you? I moved to the top of her head. Shaving that hair confirmed that this was comprehensive. Everything was going to change for my family. I finished, and in the mirror, beyond the shaved head, was still my loving, supportive, and courageous mom. Distinguished Young Women is sponsored by the Barbara Barrington Jones Family Foundation, Mobile County, City of Mobile, Alabama Power Foundation, Gantt Travel Management, Shoe Station, The Coffeen Family, 
Regions Financial Corporation, Jostens, and Alabama Media Group. The 65th National Finals will take place in Mobile, Alabama on June 23rd, 24th, and 25th, 2022. We are ready to see our participants back in our last category, self-expression. This category evaluates each participant's ability to clearly share her thoughts and opinions. The category counts for 15% of their total score. The participants have all been asked to make a statement about the following question. When I'm doing something science related, I'm in my element. I love exploring different scientific problems and developing creative solutions. That's why when I presented upon my research in which I had successfully developed an eco-friendly fertilizer at a Finger Lake Science Fair, I felt competent and strong. I had developed my science research skills so that my research was as scientifically accurate as possible. I felt competent and strong because I believed in my research and in my abilities as a scientist. A time in my life that I felt strong and competent is the current COVID-19 pandemic. To further my explanation, as students going through this unusual circumstances, were forced with many challenges. Though many struggled with online learning, I personally overcame this challenge. And currently, it's very important for me to attain as much information as possible on COVID-19 to better understand people's feelings around the world and also including both mentally and physically how they are distressed. Thank you. A time when I felt, felt really strong and competent was my junior year during hybrid learning. I live in a rural town and I have limited access to the internet. I also had limited accessibility to my college level chemistry class and I was able to prosper through and maintain the highest average in that class. I was very proud of this achievement and my strength working through this difficult challenge. Thank you. Even though my school has a big track team, we don't have a track. So when I decided that I wanted to learn to run the steeplechase, I had to accomplish this by observing my competitors at track meets at other schools. The steeplechase involves hurdling rigid barriers and jumping through water pits. It takes stamina and bravery to be good at this race. I remember feeling strong and competent at the state qualifier race. My dedicated training and technical preparation paid off when I won my event, earning my spot at the New York State meet. Thank you. We are so proud of how Wenting U represented New York in the 64th annual Distinguished Young Women National Finals. Here is an encore presentation of her talent performance from last year. Used as both a method of self-defense and an art form, Taekwondo traces its history back to 50 BCE in Korea. For participant number 19, Taekwondo is an outlet through which she can show her strength, power, and harmony. From New York, with a martial arts demonstration to yearning for the peace, is Wen Ting Yu. Our state program could not happen without the volunteers who make our local programs happen. Please join us in thanking the Crown Point and Moriah local committees and their program chairs for bringing the Distinguished Young Women experience to their communities.